Chapter Two: Use Organized Lists. In some problems, you need to generate large amount of information, or you need to count a lot of things. Now, do not randomly generate data. Rather, go from one extreme to another, such as from greatest to least. An organized list can help you keep track of the data and to make sure no data is missing nor repeated. Let's look at one example of how we can use an organized list. You throw three darts. All of them land in the region of the dartboard shown. How many different sums are possible for you to score? So here is our dartboard. So there are many ways that you can score. Maybe some of the darts land in eight and five and two, or you can have like all three land in region two, or maybe two in five and one in eight. If you count like that, you will guarantee to miss out some of the scores. So we're going to use an organized list to list the possible scores from one extreme. To another to make sure everything is covered. So this is how we can use the list. So we can organize the list by number of dots land in the center, like the best score possible in the center, the region that let you score eight points. And we're going to list them from all to none. So I have A, B, C, D here. A means all dots land in the best region. And case B says two dots land there in the region that says eight points. And C and D represent one dot lands there and no dot lands there. Now. Just list all the possible ways that the dots can land before populating the data. Don't get yourself too busy in populating the data, get into the detail while you forget, you know, the higher level thing. So always do the higher level, put them down like placeholder, and then you can generate the data one by one. And this is what you will get after you generate the data. So if you have all three land in the best region, then your score is 24. If you have only two that land in the best region, then you have either eight, eight, another one, the third one can land in five, making the total 21, or you can have eight, eight, and then the next one lands in the region of two, making the total 18. Now, even when you are listing like this, make sure that you also go from one extreme to another. Now, since we are listing the score from best score to the worst score, so we can also list, like when we list these two, also make sure we list from the better one to the worst one. Now, case C is only one dot lands in region 8. So the other two dots land somewhere else. So it can be both 5-5, five, five, again, from the, the best scenario to a 5 and a 2, a little bit less than the best scenario, and the worst one, 2 and 2. And then you can also sum up the total. And the last scenario is none of them lands in the region of 8. So let's list them out also from the best to the worst. So I can have all three actually land in 5, or two fives and one 2, or one five, two twos, and the worst one is all three land in two. Now that way, we cover all the possible ways that can be scored. And look at the total now. The last thing is to look at the total. The problem asks how many different sums are possible. So look for anything that is repeated and don't count those things. So if you look from the best all the way to the worst, you see that we have 24, 21, 18. Now this 18 is repeated, so we are not going to count this 18. And 15 is also, uh, this is a new 15, but I have a 15 right here. 
this is 15 this is also 15 so let's cross off this one and I also have 12 here and 12 here so let's cross one out and just make sure we don't double count and then we have 9 and 6 so if you count all of them you will get 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so there are a total of 7 different sums okay a good question for you to think about how else could you have organized the list in our example here we list out the score based on how many darts land in the best region the both eye and the region 8 how else could you have organized the list well perhaps one suggestion is you can based on how many scores are equal like we have all scores are equal or two scores are equal or none of the scores uh, are equal okay here's a practice for you how many different sums are possible if four darts are thrown and all land on the dartboard pause the video now and when you are ready move on here's one possible solution to the practice so this time I'm going to organize the list by number of equal scores instead of number of, of darts that land in the best region I just want to try to show you something different now so we have from four equal scores to two equal scores oh by the way why from four to two can we also have another case that is only one score is equal or basically like all the scores are different why do we stop at two well we are throwing four darts remember that and we only have three different scores here so if four darts are thrown and all of them land somewhere in the region there must be at least one that's repeated in uh, one of the regions so the fourth one must land on somewhere that's already been landed by another dart that's why we have four scores are equal and three scores are equal and two scores are equal now once you list them out then let's continue to populate the data so this is what the data looks like so when we have four scores are equal I can have eight 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 or they all land in five region or land in the two region so this is the sum or I can have three scores are equal now if I have three scores are equal I can have like they are all in the A region with the fourth one in a different one again I list from the better one to the worst one or I can have all three land in the same region of five and then I list the other possible uh, cases from the better one to the worst one or they all land in the region of two and then the last one land in the eight and the five region similarly if only two scores are equal then I can have eight eight or five five or two two and then within each one I'm going to decide what the other two may look like I can have the other two that is five five from the better one to the slightly less than better um, so it's 5 plus 2 and then the worst one is 2 2 or I can have two scores that are equal and they are in the 5 region and then the other two can be now instead of 8 8 I know I should have started with 8 8 but I figure out it's repeated compared to this first one so I skip that one so the next one is 8 2 and then I also have 2 2 because 2 8 and 8 2 are the same and then the worst one is I have two equal score that they are in the two region and I can have two two instead of two two eight eight which is repeated here I can have two two eight five and instead of two two five five which is repeated here I just skip that one and that's what I got and now let's examine the sum and again omit the ones that's repeated 
and then there are a total of nine different sums shown here. Okay, here's another example. In how many ways can 40 be expressed as the sum of two prime numbers? How can you decompose 40 to be the sum of two prime numbers? Since we are talking about the sum, maybe our first thought is, okay, so 40 can be written as 0 plus 40, 1 plus 39, 2 plus 38, 3 plus 37, 4 plus 36, and so on. Oh, but wait a minute. We need to find those two numbers that are prime numbers. So if we keep listing like that, we're going to get a lot of useless information. So maybe we better just cross off the things that we don't need, like this one, because it's not prime. Zero is not prime. Prime has to start, prime has to be a natural number, and prime is uh, one is not a prime number, it's neither prime nor composite, it's a very special number. The smallest prime number is actually 2, so we're going to keep this one. We're going to keep that. I'm going to list like this. Oh, and look at this uh, This one. 4 is also not a prime, so I'm going to cross off the 4. So I can list by using at least the first number that I know is a prime number and then the next step is to examine the second number. So let's do it like this instead. So I can continue. 5 plus 35 and then the next prime number that I know is 7. 7 plus 33 and then 11, 13, 17, 19 and so on. But why did I stop here? Why didn't I keep going after that point? Well, because I realize if I have a number that's greater than half of 40, such as 23, which is greater than half, then the number that is going to add to, to make a 40, is going to be a number that's less than 20. But didn't we already list all the numbers that's le less than 20 here? So we can pretty much stop right here. Because everything down there will be just what we have seen before. So I'm, I don't need to examine this at all because if, if it's the right answer, part of the, the answer that we need, it would have already appeared before. Okay, so now let's go back to the list that we got so far, the one that we have not crossed out yet. Let's examine the second part of the addition, the second addend, to see if it's a prime number. And then we figure out that 30a is not a prime, 35 not prime, 33 not prime, and 21, 27 also not prime. So 40 can be expressed as the sum of two prime numbers. There are how many ways? We have right here, 1, 2, 3, 3 ways. Okay, here's a practice for you. In how many ways can 100 be expressed as the sum of two prime numbers? Pause the screen and when you're ready, keep going. Okay, one possible solution is to list the sum with at least one prime number from least and up, just like what we did previously. So I have listed the possible sums here and I only focus on at least the first number is a prime number that will save me a lot of time and I stop um, when I get to a half of 100 because the second half will be more or less repeat, uh, repeat the, the first half. Now I just focus on this list. I know that the first addend is prime. All I need to do is examine the second addend here. After examination, I found out only these are the sums that are made up of two prime numbers. So there are a total of six different ways to express 100 as a sum of two prime numbers. Here's your homework of the day. Now, although there are always more than one way to solve problems, you are encouraged to use what you have learned in this lesson, that is, organized list to solve them because this will help you master the skill. 
uh, some of the problems, you may be able to solve them using other ways. Uh, but for younger kids, especially those who have not learned combinations uh, or other um, advanced math, uh, an organized list is a very helpful tool. So try this out, and when you are ready, move on to the next page for the solution. Here comes the solutions. Here's the solution for the first problem. Again, as I said before, this can also be solved by using combination, but for younger students who have not learned combination, using an organized list is very helpful. And here's the other solution. This is the solution for the second problem. And here's the solution to the last problem. In this solution, my approach is, since we're going from point A to point F, so what I do is I decide what the next point I can get from A. So from A, I can go to B, or C, or D, or E. So I have four different cases from A through B and onward, from A through D and onward. And then I realize that from A to B is symmetrical to from A to C. It's just like, like a mirror, mirror image. So I skipped this part from A to C because I can use the result from A to B give me a good idea how many different paths I can go from B and onward finally to F. It will just be the same um, for from A through C. Likewise, from A to D and from A uh, to E first is also similar to one another. So I just list from A through D and use the result to predict what I would have got from A through E. Now from A through B, this is my first stop. When you get to B, you also have other options. You might go to C first, you might go to D first, or you may go to F, okay? So if I go to F, I'm done. So this is A, B, F. Or if I go to C first, then I also have other options. So I have listed this bunch that's from A to B and then to C. And then from C, I will continue to go to either go to F directly or go from E before going to F or go to E and D and F, making sure no point is revisited. And then after I'm done with C, I focus on D from A through B and then onward to D. And then from D, I can go straight to F or from D, go to E and F or E, C, F, like that. And I use the similar method to list all the possible paths, all the possible paths that I could have used to go from A to F through D. And using these two groups of results, I know that it would just be the same number of routes for me to go from A through C and from A through E. So there are a total of each part here, I have seven, seven, and then just repeat the same for the other two that I did not list. So there will be a total of 28 paths. I hope you learned something today. Please do not forget to check out my other video on problem solving strategies. Goodbye.